Hi guys, Mike here, k MRD Radio Stuff. Do you like power poles? Well, stay tuned, because I got something neat for you. Thank you! So today, we're going to build the Ham Radio Workbench 12-volt DC power strip. Uh, it's It's got four power pole... Uh, so, uh, slots, one's your power in, it's got fuses, it's got LED lights, uh, one is green to let you know it's on, and then all the red ones, hopefully you never see them turn on, but if something faults, those red ones are going to come on. Um, and then this little case came from, uh, they're called Rocket City 3D. I'm going to put links to the descriptions uh, for both of these products, uh, so just check out the link, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's see uh, what we got here. This is the bag for the 12 volt DC power strip that it comes in. Let's see what we got here. Got some wire, some power poles. And here are all the little bits and pieces to lose. So this is, you got Let's see here, one green LED, we'll need that, whoops, uh, where'd you go? So we got a green, five fuses, one, two, three, four, five, that's good, five fuse holders, one, two, three, four, five, that's good. Uh, six red LEDs. We got one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's good. And seven 1K resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So our inventory is good. And then inside here is the actual board itself. So it, uh, it looks pretty easy. I mean, it's everything's marked where everything goes. So, you know, you take your resistors, you put them in, and then you solder them from the back. And then you've got to measure these. So this is what's actually going to connect your power poles. And we'll lose those. So this goes in like such. And then we'll have to just measure out another you know, however much it takes to get through there. Not much. Um, maybe another quarter inch, I, I would guess, we'll add. So if we add like a quarter inch to that, we can solder it and then snip off the rest. So that's kind of the part I'm worried about most because once you crimp these, not like I don't have 8 million of these lying around, but once you crimp them, if you screw up, well, bye-bye. But it looks like you've got plenty of uh, wire to make some mistakes so that's good so that's all that kit now I also picked up from Rocket City 3D this is a case that they recommended I get it's a 3D printed case there's some protective uh, paper on here right now but this is what it'll all go in and this is all clear so you can see uh, all your beautiful work so We'll set that aside for now. So my thought process is to start with the smallest thing first, which would be these resistors. I have never, never have I ever soldered a resistor. So wish me luck. I've never done anything like this. All right, so that went in pretty smooth. So we need some solder. And if I don't screw this up, I really shouldn't need to worry about adding flux because I have a flux core um, solder. So let's see what happens. This is probably too big of a tip. But that should be all you need. Shouldn't need much at all. One, two, done. So then we always want to see how clean my tip is. You always want to add more solder when you're done. 
You see these guys with these nasty soldering irons. So then we snip the tip. And we're going to cut that off. Those are gone forever. That's in my carpet now. We snip the tip. I can go there. So not bad. It's looking pretty good. So let's repeat the process. Let's see. Okay, so a little mishap. Um, there's a little gold. This this side here, there's a gold thing. So when you're looking at it like this, the gold needs to be on top. Didn't know that. There are zero instructions that come with this. So <clears throat> uh, <laughs> let this be your lesson. But pretty easy. I have a little desoldering pump, so you just do that, and it sucks the solder out. So I just desoldered it really quick and uh, flipped it around. So no big deal. It took a couple minutes, but so then the next guy goes in. It's starting to look like something. A little dab will do you. Good. So then we have five more to go. One, two, three, four, five. So this should go pretty easy. Bend that guy. Gold up. I should have put my pointed tip on here, but it's too hot now. So even though there aren't instructions, it was pretty easy to go to the website and just look at it for a second. You just got to look at it. I really want this to turn out good, though. Because I have wanted this exact project for a while. I just, I absolutely love power poles. And to have something like this that's all fused and nice, very choice. A nice mutton lettuce and tomato when the mutton is nice and lean. You might get a little bit of street cred too if you tell people you built this. So here's the last one. The last, not the last starfighter, the last resistor. Resistance is futile. Ha! I made an electronics joke. So I wanted to do the lowest first. Now I believe the next stage could actually be these. So we could probably put all these on next. I think. Because that would be the next lowest because the LEDs are going to go in these slots. And those are just a touch higher. So the idea is to kind of build it up from lowest to highest. That's how my mindset is. So. Let's do this. See that? So now we can solder all these. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, really quick. This is a, this is a flux paste. I like this better than the the uh, the liquid flux, and I'm using a barbecue skewer. You really always want to use flux when you're soldering. One more. 
And hopefully this is the only smoke we see from this project is when we're soldering. All right. So that takes care of the fuse holders. Now we have, so all of these little uh, circles are indicating the LEDs. So these are all red and then your power is the green. Because these are just tiny little guys. These ones took a little bit of heat so they took a minute to flow the solder. Look at that. Look at that. That's using the Schwartz. George, if you're watching, I hope you're not cringing too bad at my solder job. You too, Jeremy. So that's all of them. Look at that! So now we only have the power poles to go. That is looking pretty snazzy. So let's cut all these off. Oh, those go flying everywhere. Those are somewhere behind my desk, those first ones. That's okay. All right, so now for the power poles. Full disclosure, I screwed this up the first time much like the resistor. So I only measured the power pole without this. So what you want to do is insert one of these first, okay? And then check the length. So that's about how much we need. So then we can cut off the tip. Hope there's enough for this. So you gotta have enough coming out there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do that every time. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put one in, gonna crimp it. I'm going to insert it, put it in here, check for clearance, clearance, and then cut it. Hey, it's all a learning process. You can learn from my mistakes. Last one. So kudos for having extra wire because that's all that's left after 20 power poles because I screwed it up the first time. Okay, so this part's a little wonky. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... It's, it's hard to just 
do this. So I figured out that if you take your helping hands and grab your power pole with it, then you can insert like such and then grab it so that way you can have it seated firmly with some flux. Let's get around that pad. Hey, get out of there. Get. Meow. Okay. And then just repeat eight more times. That's what we got. Okay. Hard drinkers, let's drink hard. Just to clean it up a touch. And that is a completed project. So now we want to put our fuses in. We're going to put our 30 and our 25. And then we have a 10. And a five. So that is fantastic. All right, so let's <laughs> let's see if it works. So I've got this little jumper in here. So if we plug this in, we got power. So now this is just a little USB charger that I hooked a power pull up. So let's plug this in the five thing. That lights on. Let's try all of them. Good, good, good. So all of these are getting power. I didn't screw anything up. And I guess if there's a fault, these red lights come on. Um, but if we pull, see if we pull that, <clears throat> you would think the red light would come on, but it doesn't. So I don't, I don't really know the purpose of that. I might have to find out. But that's cool. So let's check out uh, let's check out this little case we got. There should be eight screws in here. All right. There's the other four. And now the piece de resistance that goes in there. Ooh. Can we get it in one piece? We can. Oh, that's sexy. And that goes on like such. Now that is a power pole distribution strip that anyone would be happy to take home to their mother. Plug it in again. Green light, good. That's fantastic. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. Uh, fun little build, neat little kit, the Ham Radio Workbench 12 volt uh, DC power pole power supply. Um, I've always wanted one of these and now I have them. 25 bucks, you can buy it at hamradioworkbench.com. Um, and check out their podcast. So thanks for watching, guys. 7-3, KMRD Radio Stuff.